and five, four, three, two, one. Well, welcome in everyone to the Spotlight Podcast, uh, we, where we shine a spotlight on the talented community and creatives that have worked with DBS in this community and on set with them. And with me as always is DBS Kellerman Nikki, our fearless leader, cult leader, and as he says, humble servant. And tonight we have a very wonderful guest with us tonight. So um, welcome in Jessica Murphy to the Spotlight Podcast. Hello. It's so nice to have you here. And as usual, tradition always goes that Kellen does Kellen's shout out. If you wanted to do your shout out, Kellen. Of course, my favorite part. So a wonderful guy. Definitely want to highlight again, you know, thank you so much, Billy, for hosting this event. We absolutely love being able to show off our amazing community and the, that made our movies come real. You know, I think the coolest thing about it now is that we have movies out there with people you know, just a year ago, just met us the first time and whatnot. Right around this time, we were getting ready. We are like, uh-oh, what's going to happen? It be a nightmare. What am I signing up for? All that fun stuff. But again, Jessica really and uh, Lizzie both played such a huge role. Too. We always talk about just how our fantastic job. I love the fact that it was like a mom and daughter because like to me, I think that gives you like a production value look. It's like, has got, look at this. Look at the depth of the yeah. actors there. So I thought it was really, really cool in that. That being said, I do want to also highlight with Jessica that she, along with Lizzie, really the first person, the first two people in the Discord process. Sure, we had Howard as our first actor when it came to finding us online, but he found us before. That. This was the for- first people that went through our audition process, went through the callback process, got the role, and we flew them out there. And this was day one of it. So, like, the big thing here is, like, if it's day one of something, that is when, you know, terrible job or whatnot, we could have just been like, okay, I guess we don't do the Discord thing. And since then, we've now cast over 50 plus roles when it comes from the Discord community. Um, and we're growing, you know, we're, we're consistently doing it now. Um, we got one more movie left after The Girl in Cabin 14. And I really do cannot thank, you know, Jessica and everyone who was involved in Horror in the Force. It's so awesome to watch it. But as I mentioned before, Intro super critical, and I thought they did a fantastic. Thank you so much, Jessica, for joining us. Thank you so much, Billy, as always. For that being said, I'm gonna go fade. That was folks. Well, thank you, Kellen, and of course, Jessica. It's such a pleasure to have you here. I love doing these because I get to know, I get to meet all these people that are in movies. We all get to get a little insight and get to know you a little bit better. And from someone that's in a movie that we all love, the most recent one, Horror in the Forest. But if you wanted to just start out and introduce yourself, let us know who you are and your experience, your background in acting. Well, uh, I, again, my name is Jessica Murphy. Lynn is my middle name. That's just about my socials because when I created my Facebook back in, I'm going to age myself here, in 2007, <laughs> um, I had my middle <laughs> name in there because there was a lot of Jessica Judges because my, my maiden name is Jessica Judge <clears throat> for whatever reason. So I've always wanted to be an actress for as long as I can remember. It was my biggest dream, my biggest goal. And I just thought because I was 32 that that dream would never happen. Uh, So going into the origin story, I remember having a really rough time last July. My whole life was in chaos. I mean, it's still chaos, but really in chaos at that point in my life. I remember laying in bed at 2.30 in the morning on TikTok. I had just gotten it, and I'm scrolling through, and this guy pops up, Helen, and he's like, could you ever picture yourself in a horror movie? You know, it's the dead of the night, it's pitch black in my room, and I audibly say out loud, I absolutely can. And so I joined <laughs> the I joined the Discord, and uh, I meet a bunch of amazing people that I still talk to this very day, great family, amazing, wonderful, supportive people that completely changed my life. And I auditioned for three roles. I got two callbacks. And then when I got the role for Intramon, I was like flipping out. I just couldn't believe that me, a mother of three children, has never acted before other than a school play when I was a freshman in high school, the role the very first time I auditioned. And I was just like, um, 
okay, I'll just act like how I would be on a camping trip. My children woke me up at 3 a.m. I would be annoyed. <laughs> so that was kind of the persona that I went with um, the role. It's kind of like my background with DBS and with acting. And I've gone on to do a voice. I did a voice, a small voiceover, and then I did, was a dead body. I've done Aldi commercial. I've done Catholic Family Life commercial. I did a musical. Um, a couple different concept pieces, and I'm going to be doing another commercial soon. But that was kind of my start into acting and kind of where I'm at today. I had a photography business prior to this, so I do photography as well. So I really liked being able to be on set working with Kellen and Brendan to kind of do things with angles and lighting because I had a, a background in that so I was really really fun it's kind of my background with that well I love I love that you call it your origin story and it is and it's really cool because you know I when I've had the opportunity when Kellen and I have spoken about this before and Brendan and I talked about it and Dylan but it's really cool to go back you know back in time to the beginnings of the discord you were in on the discord in this community when it was still just figuring out everyone was trying to figure out what it was what it was going to yep. become and it's and, and it's really cool because a lot of people that are here now that are very active but also you know this really first opportunity to be in a movie saw him on TikTok and was like you know what and i love you audibly said out loud you know <laughs> i could i can i can do that i do want to do that i am going to do that and auditioned when you auditioned for horror in the forest and, and you know and and that's really cool that experience of that excitement that you felt for finally doing something that you wanted to do that you got that ex opportunity and that's really cool and i'm curious so you know as you've seen this community grow what are your thoughts and how do you feel like this community is now as opposed to what it was like back then because you said you still stay in touch with quite a few people that were from then and i know a few of them on here that are here tonight and I just want to know what, what it was like for you for that experience, because yeah. Kelly mentioned before, of course, and we all know Howard is really the, the first, first fan yeah. to be in one of the movies. But yeah. it was really cool that you're one of the first Discord community members to go through that process and end up in a movie. What's that like for you? I do want to give one more shout out. Uh, Jessica played a huge role, again, in being part of like the original mod team and things like that. So like... There was a lot of really cool stuff in a very important time. I believe it was around July. I was trying to check on my mobile, but Discord July hates 6. mobile. July 6th? Okay. So, I mean, that was, for anyone who was here in the first week of July, honestly, I feel like this is a story now, or not, it's a fun war story, but let me tell you about the first July. So, TikTok, I don't know if it was Batman coming out and me looking like Paul Dano and it just going crazy, but we were doing like 1,500 people and every time I went live, we were getting like 300 people. Um, and again, you know, people join all the time, don't really do much or anything like that. Um, but that was insane. And like what's crazy with that is like we went from like June, it picked up a little bit. I think we just crossed like a thousand, maybe like, like we just crossed a thousand. And then like July 1st through July 5th, we added 7000 people. Like we we just soared up like it was insane and that was like again before like I remember it was almost like I deputized people I was like all right I need like mods like now and I was like you 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 like let's go let's do it let's and that was such a chaotic period have an event this was like that was such a stress test for this <laughs> that like if I didn't have a team helping out then it would such a shit show it would have been like insane and it was like really the first like essence of what the mod team is now um and they did the whole event team stuff too so they did like everything um so i just wanted to shout that out because i mean that's a huge you know again i always talk about there's so many things that one doesn't or you know it's just in overall a helpful that we need so i do want to highlight that because jessica did a, a huge favor during that time period like everyone that came in through that time period kind of like you got a little comrade it's like you're on d-day or whatnot There's a lot of really good july members here so i appreciate that 
And you crushed in our end. Oh, thanks, Callan. I appreciate that. I was unsure of what to do. I basically rewrote the entire intro script and was like, I would say that. Like, a mom would say that. Like, this is what I would say. And we just kind of went with it. Like, the bloody... I remember, like, talking about the bloody part where I, where I pop back up in the tent. I'm like, I think I should pop back up in the tent. I'm like, oh, I don't know if we should try that. I'm like, no, I really think you should. We ended up filming it. It's kind of... I'm, that's the clip. That's the that's the thing on Amazon is me be, being bloody. And I remember it was smelled like chocolate. And I'm like covering myself. And I'm like taking dirt and leaves and just like throwing <laughs> all of this on my body, all over my face, on my hair. There's a picture of me in the bathroom at the Airbnb afterwards. Like just got done filming a horror movie. So that, <laughs> I have that's this is on my arms from being ganked by Kellen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely put you through the ringer on that one. Um, but that, I'm glad you brought that up. Being the cover image, like we can't even begin to describe how important that is. That's not just like, oh, we randomly decided on a picture. That was against hundreds of still shots. So we it basically- It almost didn't happen too. It almost it, didn't happen. <laughs> and I know, that, like we were going and then it's like, all right, you know what I mean? And yeah, thankfully, yeah, you literally like, you just want to like bloody me up and like walk around like, all right, sure. That saved us so much money. That was the, the highest converting. And again, we use that as like a metric to everything. And why you will see that cover everywhere. And it's funny because like when we're working with people, we'll send them an email and be like, please use this like in all caps. Like this is the most converting. Not adjust this one. So that is a, another, that's another, like I feel like that's another little bat. I'm the haunting of the murder house. The I, I count. Yeah, I count me as Mo. That counts for me. Got one too. That's fair. That's fair. There you go, Kellen. Well, it really is an iconic image, and it and that's why I was <laughs> asking for the prep for this for doing the ad for your your interview tonight, uh, your spotlight episode was that image because that is that hooks. I mean, that's amazing. That's so good, and it is. It's very. I. It's an iconic now. To where when I joined, when a lot of us joined, that's on those TikToks, on BBS Films TikTok, right? A lot of those clips are you bloodied up or you getting pulled and Kellen, your his very first yeet, his very first yank out of a tent. And that it's very that's a very dramatic scene. That that made me want to watch it and couldn't wait for it to come out. And I'm sure a lot of people felt the same way. And that, I mean, it is, it's very iconic. But to to kind of back up a little bit, because I those stories about on set, those are the really awesome parts that I want to really dig into. <laughs> but it was, like Kellen said, he deputized you and a lot of, a few others. It was, this community was a totally different place. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you, right? Thank you for being there in the beginning and really making this thing stick around and make it where it is what it is today, because that many people at that time joining that rapidly, this could have been, like Kellen said, a shit show. And you yeah. guys really set the bet. Yeah, you guys really sent the bench for us now as mods now, how things should be, what this community turned into. So I wanted to thank you for that. And say, well, so back then, really, because when, so what roughly when would, were the auditions for Horror in the Forest? And then when did you audition? What, how long did it take you to kind of go, okay, you know what, I'm going to do this. And you audition. I mean, how long, when was that? As soon as, I, as soon as Kellen's face popped up on my phone and I was watching TikTok, I was like, yeah, I, I could see myself dying in a horror movie. I'd probably be the first one to die too, is what I was thinking. But I audibly said, you know, I absolutely could. And uh, that's the whole point and the whole reason why I joined. I didn't originally join for the community because I didn't know what Discord was. I had I didn't even have a Discord. I created a Discord specifically for DBS for audition. After I yes. joined, there was like twenty three hundred. I remember when we start. No, it was less than twenty three hundred. There was less than people when I joined because um, there was a whole post about. We reached 2,000 members, we reached 2,500 members, now we're at 3,000, and it just kept going up and up and up, and now I'm not even sure how many people are in the Discord now, I'm sure Kellen could answer that for me easily, um, but yeah, it was a completely different place. I also remember getting on the mod team, and people are, I remember sitting in Discord on my phone, 
just welcoming people, welcoming people, welcoming people as they're popping two, three, four, five, six, seven in the gen chat. Yeah. And that's how I met some amazing people. I still, again, still talk to you to this very day. Well, that's something that's really special about this community that a lot of us, when we joined, didn't know what it was and what to do and find our little corners to live in and made mm -hmm. some amazing friends, amazing people, the most creative, sweetest, kindest, most generous people I've ever met. And it really is. That's what's so special about the DBS Films Discord. That's so different than, I mean, this is not the normal way of things on the internet. It's a no. very dark place. <laughs> But it's a very, there's a, you know, it's a, it's a pretty amazing place. Now, when you heard about the auditions for Four in the Forest at that time, Into the Forest 2.0 project, right? Yeah. And you audition, what, tell us what the audition process was like for you, what your experience was in that audition process. Okay. So the auditions were posted in one of the channels. There was scripts. And so I kind of looked them all over. I auditioned for the three because at the time you could audition for up to three roles. I think it's just one now. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but you could audition for up to three. I don't know so what I, I was thinking. Three. I don't know what I was thinking. What was I thinking? You can audition for three. That was insanity. <laughs> I we had the most auditions for that movie. Is it? We, isn't that true? Yeah, Forest of Death was a little bit higher. Um, but. If you triple it, like I don't count when it's tripled, like pick the number and tripled it, then yeah, that's how you... That was so brutal of me. And like, so oh my God, um, never again. So yeah, but what we kind of do now is like, we'll watch you for a role. And if we think there could be a better one, we'll let you know. But like back then I was just like, yeah, three auditions. No, nope. a thousand things for me to watch. I love it. This is great. Like, again, this is me being hyped on the fact that it's and not understanding that I signed up. So many auditions. But again, it was super fun. I did it, so that's fine. I got through it. Never again. <laughs> hashtag, yeah, well, hashtag never again. Never forget. Well, it's a good thing that that's the way it was, and now Kellen knows how. he's. It, everything gets streamlined. Everything gets improved. They always do better every time and come up with a way to get through it because the amount of uh, the amount of auditions that they have to go through. Unfortunately, this time they had Mr. Dylan Devane helping out with that. But Kellen, you you put it on yourself. That was a lot to go through. I'm sure that was brutal. But it really does. That's the model that they leaned into with you, and then with Lizzie, who are in the intro. Now you've got you auditioned for those three roles. You got a call back. But really, I, I you know because I I really. I would I'd love, love to, to know, know what, what that experience was like for you. What, what was going through your mind when you got that call back and really the whole experience up until when you got out on set? So back then, um, I was working full-time for DCFS. I think I was still part-time at my other job as a QIDP, so case management, two different styles, uh, adult and child. Um, I'm doing my photography, so I was, like, overwhelmed. And you know, I'm thinking, you, you know, when you audition for things like that, you hear Kellen, you hear Brendan say all the time, audition for 100 roles you make you get a call back for like 10 or something so i wasn't really expecting much at all so when i got the callbacks for two out of the three i was like what no way and then when kellen messaged me with the congrats like message i remember like squeaking because i squeak it's embarrassing i know <laughs> kellen heard it but like i squeak and i was so excited and i was like telling um colton and my kids and just like oh my gosh i just i got the role and then we I was just like flipping out and like once the initial like shock came off, you know, me, a 32 year old mother of three with no acting experience, professional acting experience, I kind of was like, okay, well, what do I do? <laughs> what happens now? And so I would do these Zoom calls with Brendan for pre-production, which is when we talked about like the different details of the character, kind of go over the character, um, wardrobe, demeanor. Like, what's the mom like? What's the relationship between the mother and daughter? We kind of settled on a stepdaughter, mother kind of role, stepmom, stepdaughter kind of role to explain, like, the two tents, things like that. Bonding. Um, it was, it's a short scene. You know, it's a short intro scene, so there wasn't really a lot of depth or background. You know, I watched a little bit of the breakdown scene by scene. 
talking about how to connect it better. And I was like, oh, well, maybe I had like a necklace that got ripped off or something. I'm like thinking after the fact where they would find it to kind of tie it back. Or like um, Nelson would have a picture of his kit as a dad. You would have a picture. Hey, have you seen my child? This is my kid. So incorporating that picture. Because my kids are actually in the movie as the missing children. And me as a small child. That's me. <laughs> in the back with a stupid the- outfit. My mom sent them to me and we're in Orlando and, and Brendan goes and prints them out. And he prints out the stupid one the where I'm wearing the McDonald's outfit from oh. 1993. We, we always go. We always go. Whoop. Oh, oh, that's what I think. That's what I love about it. Now, that's what is because you were kind of saying how you worked with him, and that's really cool that they're open to that. Brendan and Kellen are open to that working with you. I, I actually do want to chime really in work. on that element because we weren't as open as we were now. Like we we weren't that open, but of all of the actors, is that what I said though? <laughs> yeah, like the, the of all the actors though, Jessica was the one that was like, I wouldn't say this shit, and like really kind <laughs> of pushed us into that edge, like. He knew, you know what I mean? Like, this isn't, you know, we're not, we're not out here weak. But most actors, as we talk about before, it's kind of, oh, it's the director. I guess I'm saying this dumb line. And Jessica's like the first person to be like, this is like really dumb. Like, can we like change this? Because I remember when I was talking with Brendan, I was like, oh, so, you know, like, how's like that next step with the development? And he's like, yeah, he's like, Jessica sent me like, three pages of like reworks and stuff like that like oh damn like really like yeah so <coughs> like now the difference is like we will actively tell you like what you think about this character development not like that is the process now that was not the case back then and kind of like how i started off the the shout out here it really was jessica and this first cast of people who in the forest creating these paths that we you know every single time continue it's almost kind of like when we were doing that movie, it's just like this people are just like walking right through the bush and she's like macheting it a little bit. Since you keep walking over the same paths, it kind of flattens it out. So like now, you know, we're working on Girl in Cabin 14. We have all of the resources for the actors. We get put like that. But really back then, that was mainly Jessica being like, we like talk about this a little bit. And it's like, all right, 100%. And it worked. Again, it it's really cool seeing how that stuff solidifies really Jessica being vocal about it, which again, it's not easy being vocal as an actor. Last thing you want is the director. I've been working on this script for 15 years. Like, how dare you? Like, like, I wouldn't say this. The intro, like, the intro mom would this? say this. Like, you don't get it. Like that is a serious thing that happens on. I do give you props for doing that. And again, it really did set the foundation. Well, then that's another reason that we owe you our thanks for setting, blazing that trail for the rest of us to be able to give that feedback. (laughs) I mean, what's, I mean, just being like a mom and not having, well, I don't have that actor experience. So I came on there just kind of like, well, here are my suggestions. We're in pre-production. You're, here's what you gave me and here's what's realistic and what other parents would connect with. And I, I didn't think about it at the time, but like looking back, especially listening to the videos of the scene by scene breakdown with Nelson, like, man, he should have had a picture of his kid. He should have a picture of his kid walk around with him like this. Have you seen my child? This is my child. You know, like that's what a parent would do like in a missing child situation, especially now, like being with DCFS for over two years, kind of understanding a little bit more family dynamics and different things that I probably could have maybe touched on more but I was just really excited to go and be a part of it and there was so much going on on set but that set in particular a lot of things that happened and like we left the camera on the side of the road and we had to go back and get it so the camera was almost you know not there luckily it was still there that was so bad that I can't even begin (laughs) to express how bad Brendan left the camera literally like a four thousand dollar rig potentially like eight thousand depending on on the side of the, we could have got there. I could have showed up and been like, oh, hey guys, and Brennan could have been like, we have no care. That is the potential. Yeah, we went back and it was, it was at the like, the the spot where we left it. Like they brought, it was at the apartment complex. So we went back and it was still there, thank God. But it was that, and then I forgot the backpack. So that's why I'm carrying around a chair because I forgot the backpack. 
you know, that's the kind of stuff that you learn from. And then the weird things that I said, I, you know, Brendan sent me some outtakes. I'm like, why am I like this? Like, what, really, why am I like this? <laughs> but it all worked out because I had the crystals. I had the crystals. I had my crystals with me now, and it rained. It rained on the luggage on the way there. And so the first scene when they're in, we're doing the interview at the beginning of the movie, um, it had already rained, and that's why the lighting is so great. Because after it rained, I'm like, no, listen, it's good. the clouds are gonna clear. It's gonna be fine. I got my crystals, and it's like raining. We're all in the car, and it's like raining. I'm like, it'll be fine. We'll just watch. And we get there, and it stops raining, and the light's just perfect, literally perfect. I'm like, don't ever question the crystals. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> well, I mean, though, well, let's just get right into it because I mean, there's so apparent, there's so many amazing behind the scenes uh, craziness that happened and, and ridiculous stories that could, that I mean, it could have went the other way. So you're there now. Whose idea was it to cut the back out of the tent to fit in there? With that scene where you are, you come in, you comfort Lizzie, you come in, you comfort your stepdaughter right from the other tent and that's what you said you're kind of pulling from your being a mother yourself in real in real life and your kid wakes you up in the middle of the night i heard something and you're you're very annoyed very frustrated like i'm just trying to sleep but uh, i want to just tell us all of these really because there's a lot of things you almost lost the camera left the camera behind and then now you you really interjected you're like hey listen this is not what i would say and they're like okay what would you say and then you tell them you're like three pages of what this is what I would say, and this is what I'm going to say, and that's what they ended up using, right? So, But we're, you're on set, all these wild, crazy things. I mean, it rains, and then the lighting ends up being perfect. You cover, you get covered in – I'm curious about – like, you get covered in the blood, and you're rubbing dirt and leaves, and you look like you went through it, right? And, I did, though. I mean, that I must dread. have been – yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like what was that experience like you getting just i mean absolutely yanked out of that tent. <laughs> i was yeeted out of that tent okay like i, I yeah, dove yeah. into the tent and then dylan's back there was, i don't know if it was dylan and Colin, but dylan had me on a tarp and they're just ripping me and i'm like oh it's like you know my life every day with illustration <laughs> um <laughs> So it, I mean, I had bruises from when Callan Yankee behind the tree, that scene that was kind of sped up, but yeah. it wasn't bad. I grew up with a lot of male cousins and I have a lot of male friends. Like my husband was like a wrestler. So I would try to like fight him all the time thinking I probably could, <laughs> but then I would get hip tossed. And so again, yeah. growing up with a bunch of male cousins and a lot of guy friends my whole life, I'm just used to that stuff. There's a picture on my Facebook of one of my best friends me over it me jumping at him and throwing over his shoulder because i lost a fucking bet there's that that's not nothing i'm not used to yeah now you guys obviously setting up for those scenes where you're getting yanked out of that i mean yeeted out of that tent and then kellen pulls you by that tree right and then you appear in the yeah. tent as we've seen in the movie did he you guys walk through how many times did he pull you by that tree <laughs> to so, get it right? A significant <laughs> amount of times, actually. And then me squatting down, <laughs> getting up from so I'm squatting in this tent, and Brian's like, go again. I'm like, my legs were burning. Trying getting yeah. in the squat position, stand up and to walk out and be like, you know what, I'll go check it out then. Like there's literally nothing here. Like, well, why are you why are you complaining? It's are always tough. So here's the thing. <laughs> the thing, I think we had Dylan try to eat you at we didn't we have Dylan? Dylan just couldn't eat me harder. Yeah, Dylan couldn't do it. Like, and here's the thing. I so I will say I am a gentleman. I'll be like, listen, I'm gonna like I'm gonna no. I do. I warn you. That's what I warn. I go this like you didn't like, that last time. I had a handprint. I had I had the finger fingerprint. I know that. Get get tougher skin, bro. Um, but <laughs> no. So I do say I do say like, hey, I'm gonna pull you. Like it's gonna look good. Like if it's too hard, you let me know, and like we can. But for the hard, well, so that's the thing. Yeah, you're just like do it. I'm like, all right, Jesus, go. But the thing with the yeats and whatnot is like, if if you don't make them look aggressive, they don't come out good. So like, you do have to put yeah. like some like basically what it ends up is is like I essentially yank you and then try and catch you, but I don't do enough of it. So you just kind of get like, you you tr you try you you you. All right, all right. Next time I won't. We'll see what happens then. Just bang them right to the floor. <laughs> All right, oh, all right. You know what? You know what, Cal? How about this? I'm gonna eat you. I actually think I'll Dylan. will catch you. It'll Dylan, so far, Dylan, so far has been the only person that like I legitimately 
Bigfoot project. He's like, I'm like, like I can like pull you down or whatnot. And he's like, just do. It. He's the only person that like I legitimately. I did pull back a like I'm not tr- like I'm not trying to hurt the. Person. I told you to do what you wanted, man. I told you just you yeet me as hard as you Yeah, but still, like I said, I'm a gentleman. The hard part with the yeet though is it's not just the yeet, which needs to be good. If Brendan gets any of my hand or anything on camera, then it's a can't use the take. So what happened? My hand had to go behind the tree. Yeah, that's why I was doing this. That's why I had that weird this. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of weird stuff we had to make you do. We didn't even know that until like take seven. So for the first seven takes, we're just like throwing you behind, like like for the first three Dylan tried didn't work, and it's like all right, <laughs> step aside, child. Then Dylan grabbed. He was he was the leg puller. I was, was we were we were we were both leg pulling. We we found out the leg pull, and the leg pull is a different one too, because you were one of the first ones before you realized. See, there's a towel beneath. You know what? In in like in uh, Andrews, if you see that, he did not have the yeet, just a device to go on your stomach. And when you pull, you did not. Yes, that is just road rash. So we 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 did two of those. And again, this is this highlights you know, us learning how to yank people off screen. We, again, we did it in four. Yeah, we didn't force a death and like every once in a while, but this was one where like get a tarp. Yeah, we're getting, we we got the tarp. Um, but that must have been at least twenty times. All of them, and then at least twelve times. Stuff in this, the the pricker bush. Oh yeah. You want to call it? Well, so that's the thing. Also, to get like a good yeet channel, you're usually like it's not there's not a path. You're kind of like in a bush, yanking someone, pulling them, that's yanking right. them. And this again, this is why I will go back to. Massive benefits with Discord and whatnot is every single time I've had to eat a Discord person, they have been 100% about it. You know, you saw Hayden. He's like, spin me. This is awesome. We talked about Dan. Dan was just flopping. Like, this is a, like, it, it is, it's late at night. You know, we just put you through all this stuff. And now it's like, all right, I'm going to potentially this tree. Like, ready? Action. So that is, that is a lot of stuff there. But that was easily 30 takes of yeeting between. Uh, tent and the tree and then yeah and then it's like all right well we're gonna put blood and twigs on top of you and out in the middle of the, the forest yeah man. And, i was like i'm just gonna roll around in the dirt i like throwing dirt on me it's look at you know the the main location with the shower is like 25 minutes away like, all right here you go and they end Kellen's car like this trying not to touch anything like <laughs> i got i got a leather seat thing in the front seat you get if you get bloody or yeeted, you typically that's fair. With your playlist, can confirm hate anybody. Yeah. Well, that did you get so? I mean, that's that's the first thing you've ever been the movie you've ever been in, and that's yep. the experience you had. I mean, you got tossed around those woods, and I don't want to glaze over. Let's not rush past the fact that Dylan could not do it. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Dylan? He, he's gonna watch us and be like, he, he's not here. But he, when he watches it later, I, I just want to say, Dylan, come on, buddy. He's gotten better at it though, because he did. He barrel rolled Hayden Anubis, but he went up in the air. Hayden caught air when they pulled him out. Dylan was just having it, and he was also in the Bigfoot suit pulling pulling Hayden away. And Hayden's not a little guy too. He's a big, he's a pretty big guy, tall guy. But the fact that you're, I know the scene though, you are, you put your arm out and yeah. it's like, what? Is, and then, but that was so good. It, it is, it's just like, I didn't know that they sped it up. That's cool that they sped it up. I thought like, whoever pulled you, I'm like, damn, they really pulled you. And Helen's like, step aside, Dylan. And he's like, all right, I'm going to pull you. I'm going to try to catch you. <laughs> and like the scene that we actually used, he does pull me really, really hard. And then I like fall into the pricker bush, and Kellen's like, "I tried." Oh, okay. <laughs> I tried. Well, you said you had a you had a, a Kellen sized handprint, a very small handprint in I your had arm. I the fingerprints <laughs> from Kellen's hand on my arm for about two to three business days afterwards. <laughs> Kellen, do you have anything to say for yourself? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. That's part of the process, though. Like I said, I there were there were warnings, there were checkups after every single yeet. And there was, no, this is great. And I'm like, all right, well, and like the, the yeats that we use, like. Complaining though, I wasn't complaining, man. I was all about it. I was, yeah. basically, I was basically Dylan day one because Dylan wasn't there. I was basically Brennan's personal assistant and I had to do all the other stuff. So I was all about it. It basically was. And I, I will say, uh, Dylan's just a gentleman. 
That's why, you know what I mean? Like now he's lost that. Like once you, uh, once you film uh, enough movies, once you film enough movies, you kind of just get to the point where you're like, you know what? I'm going to throw this person in the tree and you know, fine. So because you really do it. Like ones that look the best are the ones that like, I just such a sharp tool. Like it is like I, the way I describe it is that first motion is enough to send you flying. And then I try and catch you. So, like, I'm literally trying For to me. throw you, you into the ground. There's a couple times I didn't even try to catch you without being a sassy brat. <laughs> that, yeah, there might have been one where I, I know. Um, but that is my intention. My intention is to eat you and then catch you. Um, I'm really good at the first part. Second part, I'm working on. <laughs> well, they have gotten they have gotten more streamlined, more efficient at it. They've done it so many times. And okay, so you're rolling you're around really in bad. the dirt, in the mud. What's it like as, as someone who's been here since it, the Wild West days, the battle scars that you guys have from then, from the Discord, from the, what the community was like then. What's it like to see their progression? Because I mean, you're in a movie that is doing, you know, it's a great movie. It's really good. I've talked to Jim, I've talked to Brett, everyone that, you know, people that have been in it, the few that I've had the opportunity to speak to, and your your intro set the bar. It really did. That intro set the bar for how good their intros are getting. What's it like to see that progression, that growth in this community, in their mil- in the, the movies that they make? You know, it's encouraging to see, because I remember when I first started, I watched all of the movies, and I remember sending Kyle the DM, like, I did it. Did it. I watched them all. And it's like you watch the movies and they keep getting better and better. They they learn from the mistakes and they move on and they up their ante in a lot of different ways. And not just necessarily like an SFX or like stunt or something, but like dialogue too. Because like like what what Colin was saying, more people are feeling comfortable to be like, uh, as a mom, I wouldn't wouldn't say that. that. Or as a person, that just doesn't make any sense. Like, why would I say that? You know, because being a parent, not being a parent, you don't have the same thought processes so it's nice to see you know the progression and just getting better and better and better sit there and say well i was part of this project i was here at the beginning and so who knows if we go on what can come from this project you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. it's just cool see it is it really is the growth has been amazing since January, how, how much it's grown and how much it's become this amazing place with all these wonderful people in the community, but also working on set. And that passion that people like Howard and you have had on set, you're willing to get yanked around and bruised up and thrown around and, and just, I mean, you go through it in that beginning, like what we end up seeing in the movie that's just a fraction of how many times you're getting thrown around those woods in the middle of the night. I, I think Jessica had it the worst in that movie. Like I'm thinking about it. I think you did. Like, I think you really did. Cause All like roasted me. All of you. Nelson, Jim had it a little bit. Cause he, he had the, he had the, the apparatus. I mean, Dylan had pepperoni eyes and like not being able to see is a pretty tough one. I mean, we really did just douse you in blood. Get, we, Threw you behind a tree a bunch, doused you in blood, and then threw you into a tent and pulled you. Because again, like, not just the being dragged out of the tent, look how she is jumping into the tent to scream for Lizzie. Like, that is an impact my every idea. single time. That was yeah. my idea. I was like, we need to do it. And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, just film it once. Just film it once. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Again, we're we're like sitting here like maybe maybe like she'll get hurt or something. Like we can't do that. And she's like, do it. Do it. So it's like all, all right, here we go. Testing your patience, like do it. Are you gonna do it? You're gonna be a little bitch about it. Do it. Yeah, so it's like, all right, here we go. Let's let's go. Um, but no, it's it's honestly I think you did have and I mean it usually ends up happening. I think like I'm trying to think Bigfoot was a tough one. I think like again, as you mentioned, like we really did try and step up, just having more special effects in general, like even horror in the forest. Horror in the forest was the very first time, and like Tatum was there to assist some degree. But we had Mackenzie, who was before the Discord that we used for uh, the murder house. We used her for some other projects as well too. So like that was the first time that we had additional 
like special effects. Because things like special effects just take time to prep and everything. You know? So I think you did have it the worst. And I mean, like, again, like, you know, beyond like Bigfoot, someone's in the Bigfoot suit, just sweating. Someone's got one eye and they're falling on the floor. And like, you know, when you talk about it, it doesn't sound too bad. You know, oh, I'm just going to pull. Okay, it is three in the morning. You will have no sleep. Your sticky, weird substance is covering you. And now you're just getting... It smells like ch- chocolate, by the way. It's, it's like this weird awesome. minty chocolate thing. Like, it's usually all... Well, like favorite ice cream. All the... Yeah. I'm like, oh, delicious. <laughs> um, but uh, no. uh, I will say every special effects artist has, like, their own little, like, weird taste to it. Like, it's never consistent. Here it is. It's going to taste terrible. And then even it's like, oh, don't worry. It's like... Drink, like this one's drinkable you put it in your mouth it'll taste terrible like, oh great it won't kill me like that's not a good, like, that is not a good benefit there so like you know again i i'm someone who's had to deal with it but at some point in time you have this weird layer of blood st- your entire body it dries and it hurts when you it's like cracking I, I, like, in the yeah classes, i'm like it's eh, gonna eh, move i will say that shower hits so different though that special effects chowder, like when oh, you yeah. you peel shower. that layer of disgustingness, oh, like oh man. But yeah, I, I more props to that because yeah, we really did put you through the ringer on like that was easy. Like because again, Nelson's was only the strong survived, Callan. <laughs> I mean, hey, you get it. Like I said, intro, intro people are the most important. I'd say that as a proud intro. But no. Well, the three of us are biased in that because we're all intro That's people. That's the best crew right here, man. Main characters. Is, I will I will they bring on all our main characters. Bring them up here. I'll debate them. All right. You want, well, we can have right, like a... Let's uh, do an intro, Kelly. Let's do an intro sometime. All right. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do the you intro. Can handle, we, you can handle my roastiness. I'm going to roast you over We'll do, we'll do the intro show. The intro show will just be intro people. And we bring the main actor on and we just shit. Wow, that's no, what no, I'm... No, 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 Kelly. What did I tell you? D- tr- total DBS Island, but it's gotta be a thing. <laughs> All right. DBS Island. We'll add it. We'll add it eventually. I'll put it on my to do list. <laughs> so, so you want to do- total DBS Island where we all have like. Uh, I had a whole thing. I've been bothering him about this for about like, one business year now. <laughs> well, it'd, it'd be DBS Survivor, but my thought is seeing how the three of us are intro people. We're in the intro, and we do. We hook the audience, so we we have to take credit. You have to take credit for that, Jessica. We hook in the audience to want them to watch the movie. You're the trailer. You're that iconic bloody dim. You're. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of Carrie, in the prom scene. The dan- The in the prom scene, she gets cut. You're standing there like Carrie. Okay. Just following and that- Brendan around. He didn't even know. He was just filming things. And- <laughs> I, I, there's a he didn't put it in the movie, but there's a part where I'm just like right up at the camera, and he turns around, and he's like, "Whoa!" and he like gets scared, and he just see my my like nose and mouth, and I'm like smiling. <laughs> but but that's that's something that we could do for the spotlight, or even make a new event on here. That so like Family Feud, it could be the intro family against the the main character family. Uh, we could have a we could have a Family Feud like. Uh, dbs film jeopardy or you know family feud style where we ask the questions on like on based on the movies because i've asked a few of them and they weren't so sure on the movies that they've been and i'm like whoa what about this scene or what about this scene they're like i don't remember it was a year ago i'm like how do you not remember remember. for example for you know yeah because that's the thing and that's they're they're amazing folks all of them are amazing and everyone i've got the chance to talk to right but it does. It's a little different because we are fans first. We love what they do, and we're like, oh, my God, it would be so cool to be on set, to be in this movie. And now that it's come, <laughs> now, okay, waiting. So you guys wrapped, and it's been a while till it came out. Thank you, Amazon. Thanks, Jeff. But they finally let it go. It's good for him. He, he, gets, to, he, gets, to keep, he gets to see his next birthday now because <laughs> he let the movie go. But all joking aside, it's finally out. How? What was it like waiting for that to come out when you saw it? Because you got to see it. Did you see it before everyone else did? Like a kind of like a early viewing of it. Really did have an early or did you viewing. have to wait to? 
Yeah. Yeah, no, so they did have an early viewing of it. They um, did, but I waited and rented it on Amazon. So that was the first time I watched it was on Amazon. Oh, wow, really? How... Yeah. What was that? Did you, uh, now, now you, did your, with your husband, you watch, what is your family? Did they watch it with you? Did you see it? What do they think about it? What did you think about it? Seeing yourself on a big screen in a horror like... movie. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> some, of the, some of the parts I'm like, damn, I could have like done different, or I could have like my face oh, different than this. Yeah. yeah. You know, but again, it was my first my first movie, so I don't like I, you don't really think about all of those things until after you like yeah. you see yourself. And because I waited so long to watch it because I was being a brat and I wanted to see it like rent it, and then I get this message from Brendan saying, "Hey, we used you as the as the clip." I'm like what he's like the thumbnail i'm like what the hell is a thumbnail me being myself and i he sent it i'm like really <laughs> i'm like the scene that we weren't gonna do originally that's cool <laughs> well if you put i mean again i don't are you a big horror movie fan do you enjoy horror movies yeah i pick everything apart like especially like the ones with religion or anything to do with that like oh that's not realistic oh that's not biblical that's not tied into this religion correctly so right um yes so i i was like okay i was you know there's still things like with every movie you can pick apart like when you go back and you like oh we could have done it like this oh we could have done it like that mm -hmm. um, but it, i think it was still a really good movie it made a lot it made sense so, yeah. some movies just don't make sense like some found footage ones i think um again speaking to what was like discussed in the scene by scene breakdowns like having more shaky camera foot like putting the camera down and maybe having like a little bit more shaky things or setting it down like how a found footage would be but you know those are all mm. things that can be put into future projects so it's still yeah. like a learning experience because this is movie number 12 right kellen yeah 12 that is yeah, 12. correct it took us 12 movies to figure out i mean i say that but here's the thing it's going to be movie like 130 like, I don't know what we were thinking 10 movies ago. Can you believe we didn't well, even? Oh, yeah. it, it's, it's always amazing how much you learn. What I will say, though, it was our first venture back into found footage. Found footage so that's yeah. a lot of pressure on Brendan to figure out what the hell he is doing. Um, and Brendan's great. He has very good cinematography. He's great. <laughs> well, I am about to say something. I feel like Brendan doesn't quite understand... I, I will pride myself on if you hand me your phone to take a picture, I'm gonna hit that angle. I know where I'm kind of looking for. Uh, no, 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 not not when you were doing the one. Oh, hi, I'm Jessica. I'm like, I'm like, Kellen, this light sucks. And you're like, it's fine. Okay, it's on I, we had to this. we had to get out of there. All right, so that one doesn't count. That was a photo. That was a video. But what mm -hmm. I will say is, with Brett, like. Does anyone ever take a picture of themselves by putting the phone down and looking down at it? Is that like an angle that you use? You know what I mean? Does, In Gen Z. I, I do yeah. actually. I do actually. Yes. I don't know. So here's I'm gonna, I'm gonna I have to demonstrate. Like I think I, this I is is this phone. is this not the selfie That's angle? That's the millennial pose, I, Kellen. Get with so it. So this the, who is who is taking a selfie here, like this? Yes. Yes. Show me wow. that picture. Send it to me now. Don't go take it now. Send me the angle. Hold on. Hold on now. I'm the only reason it. I brought that up, though, is I feel like he was hitting that angle pretty early on in the found footage stuff. So, like, oh, just getting the sure. idea of, like, where you hold it. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I just got the angle. In my humble opinion. So, well, you know. I mean, and Gen Z does a lot. Like, if you, like, my little sister, who's, you know, 10 years I'm, older than me. I'm, I'm, I'm a... I'm right. This is, I'm this sending is this shit to you right now. You don't all right, all right. We'll, we'll do it. But my point in that is there was a lot of like figuring out the angle. So not only was it like a little sketchy in my opinion, element, but I also think um, just in general, like is someone holding it like this or doing that? So really compared to like what we're doing where we know found footage a lot better, you know, we were going on our fourth one that we've done. Uh, we understand concept scares and stuff like that. Or in the forest was still a big risk. And on top of that, it was a big risk style of us filming, but then an even bigger risk in the sense that we're bringing on people that we met on the internet. Yeah. So be on set with us. This should go great. And it worked out perfectly. So this was a very important movie. 
Absolutely. And let me say, I just want to say real quick. And like I said, I was asking you if you're all in, if you enjoy horror, it's, I, I get like picking a part of scene. I haven't seen myself yet. I don't know what that experience is like. I know what Howard has said about it. But as a big horror fan, I've been a horror fan for over 35 years. And I've watched every single found footage you can think of that at that peak of the found footage era. And I know, Kellen, you have guys, you guys were, you and the brother, you know, your brother were talking about that today, people comparing it to Blair Witch. My comparison for it for Blair Witch is it reminded me of that really amazing feeling of watching Blair Witch for the first time. It recaptured that awesome feeling because I think I, you guys did, in my opinion, nailed found footage. It's good. It's a good found footage experience. But Jessica, what more so emotionally, what was it like watching yourself uh, in a movie before you started really picking it apart of you could have done it differently, right? What was that experience like actually seeing yourself in a movie that millions of other people have seen? Um, I didn't like my face in some of them, but like, again, I'm also a photographer and hypercritical mm -hmm. of myself in general. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, okay, yeah. I wasn't watching the camera. Again, I didn't see the movie until last month. Right. I totally wish I could like go back and be like, okay, I would have fixed my face. I wouldn't have had this expression. I would have done whatever. Oh, and you like yourself. Don't lie. Don't lie to everybody here. He's like, oh, no one likes Are you uh, kidding yeah. me? Are you, have you heard how I describe my own acting? Dude? Yeah, how you're King uh -huh. BBS. How you're oh. President BBS. <laughs> There's the word acting. See here the do you see King actor there? No, you don't. I'm gonna, I'm, some, I'm gonna find some writing somewhere that says I'm the best actor ever. Good luck. You can you, Okay. You, you, there is there is no way that's like no one can find that YouTube video of me from two thousand and seven or six or whatever. <laughs> I will say this. No actor I, I I'm legitimately trying to think if any actor we've ever has said they like their performance. Not a one. I don't Not think a I don't think a single one. one. Spotlight has ever said that they thought they did it. They said, I, I'm glad that I had the role, the experience, but on every single spotlight, every single person that has been on here, I've complimented, like you, I compliment you, your performance in a horror movie as the intro character to get us hooked was effective and it worked, and it did. And I've told Ben, I've told many others on here who have said, oh, I did okay, or my family doesn't watch my stuff, because it's like they, their comparison analogy was, you don't go to the carpentry site or job site with a carpenter <laughs> to watch them build a wall or build a house because that's their job. And they don't see it in the same way as everyone else sees itself, right? But as a movie fan, as a big, big horror movie fan, again, I wanna just say that your image, that iconic image of you covered in blood was very reminiscent of, all you were missing was a prom dress was very reminiscent of Carrie, not the Hold remake on. piece of crap, not the piece of crap remake. I'm talking about the Sissy Spacek one from the 70s. Which and is the, the best look one. on your, the, well, the look on your, as a true horror fan, if you like the new ones, I'm sorry, you're not a horror fan. But if you, if Sissy Spacek, that's a big, bold statement, I know, folks. Sorry, internet. <laughs> but in, and okay, now, but that look on your face for that cover image that the brothers ended up using. I was like, oh, somebody's about to die. Because that gets into the end where you come back as one of the witch's minions, as one of the trapped souls in the woods, right? And you're hunting them down. You're hunting Alexa down. Get closer. Now, <laughs> now tell us I what was that him, like. I'm like, you should have the people come back that died. I'm like, you should have the people that come back that died. Oh, that was yours. That was oh, your, no, that like, was your like, suggestion. Like, literally, we were just, we we're like, hey, we got people bloody. And then, like, we're kind of like, what do we do? Because, like, there were no bring back zombies. I was following Brendan around. That's how that yeah. started. He's like, just stay here. I'm like, why? <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm going to scare this fucking guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, will, I will say I will say what ends up happening no. is, um, <laughs> like, the people that do scare you are the special effects people that are on set. Like, every once in a while, you turn around and you just be like, oh, my God. Like, I'm like, oh, what? I was that did happen, and then basically, yeah, we we turned the camera on, started getting people in that. But that basically, again, that did start where like Nelson was supposed to come back, but he wasn't supposed to like hunt, and like that was something where it happens to some degree on all of the sets. Like I feel like we're like, and they end up usually good. But yeah, it was basically 
that's just sitting there. It's like filming scenes of like looking around, whatever, with that scene where she's like has the camera looking around. It's like he's like, just go whatever. And I'm like, I'm gonna scare this guy. Like, I'm gonna get him. And so he like sees me and then he's just whatever. And then I'm like right, right behind him. He sent me a clip of it. He's like, whoa. <laughs> Now, I want to ask you, is that possible to see that? If you could share that with the rest of us, we, as DBS fans, as a family, I, might, this have we would, I, I might have the clip we, recent. <laughs> he, I mean, I, he has it, I'm sure, but I, I We would, I Brendan, if you're li I know Brendan listens to these. He told me when he was on here that he does listen he does. to the spotlight when sure, he's working. Love everything I've had to say then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Brendan. I'm sorry, my friend, but I want to see that sorry. video of first appearance. I'm scared. Yeah, sorry, not sorry. I'm uh, first scaring the shit out of you because I want to see that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, also, sorry, I would absolutely do it again. I would do it. if I if I got, if I am ever able to, you know, be on a DBS set again. If you know they would have me, I will scare the shit out of him, and I will yeet Kellen with the way he yeeted me. Well, we know Dylan has gotten much better, more vers versatile at it. He's better. He's a lot better at it. He is a professional one at doing that now because like I said, him in that Bigfoot suit yanking Hayden away a hundred times and then pulling him out of the tent even just a few minutes later. Right. And that's so that's what I mean you can if you wanted to. I'm sure that that eventually head of uh head of stunts could be you could be the head of the stunt department for TBS in their future movies. No, no, no. This is how you want to pull someone out of a tent. This is the proper procedure for diving into a tent it's a um, proper procedure. because you had <laughs> and you could demonstrate that. Procedure, what's up? Yeah, you can demonstrate you could do on set. You could demonstrate the proper procedure and technique for diving into a tent before you get yeeted by the creature. <laughs> in TV. Now that goes into like your future. What you said that your work, you've worked on, you know, uh, commercials and and a voiceover role. Um, is that the is that your goal? What is your plans for for your career? Do you want to continue in acting? That experience yes. that you had, with, and so what what are you currently working on? What 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 would you like to share with the with us in the internet? You know, what are you working on so we can take a look at it and, and help support your career? So I am going to be working with I'll be again on another project. I did a commercial with them that was completely improv. There was no scripts. They just got like genuine reactions and like whatever you did, like the guess the guess the food. So they're bringing me back some time for that. I have three audition requests that I have neglected to film because I got sick after coming back from the Ozarks, which I was there for five days having amazing fun, and I lost voice. So I'm just was waiting to, to be completely recovered before I submit those auditions. But I hope to do as many project as po projects as possible. I want to be versatile so I could do comedy, or horror, or drama, or whatever, documentaries even, because I love it. And I love to write. So I did a couple of the writing challenges here, and there's a couple different concepts that I've been working on doing like for a screenplay. And there's also a book that I'm writing. And oh wow! The funny writing. <laughs> and then, then there's the what? The funny book that I'm writing. It's so it's gonna be a compilation. Oh. I always say that wrong. A a, com, a compiling of a hundred short stories, funny stories called Petty Soup for Your Petty Soul. And each story is gonna be there are different stories I've gotten from my friends and I. Just it's like chicken soup for your soul, but funny and yeah. petty. No, no, I like, no, that's good. I like, you know, I, I love that kind of humor. I love that kind of comedy. Well, you're, I mean, you're so busy. You're so active. You know, you're a mother and you're, you know, a career woman. And then, but you're also very creative. So the writing challenges, it kind of goes into now that Kellen has, has been so kind and so generous with his time with the workshops. Have you been participating in the workshops? And what do you think about those, work, the workshops that DBS is running for us? Free of charge. I mean, do the workshops. So amazing. Just, just really do the workshops. Like I will always say, this life does come up, and like people get busy, things like that. And like I'm never like life, family, like dear, like, do those. I will be stuck. Um, but with that being said, 
uh, the the workshops really are going to be one of the major focuses for ours. Hey, everyone, quick. Oh, am I back now? I think I froze. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Go yeah, ahead. I think Spectrum, you guys froze, and I'm like, well, if they both froze, that's not a good sign. Um, <laughs> it wasn't us. But, uh, yeah, I was like, this is definitely me. Uh, but I, I went with it. Um, the the workshops, though, we really do want to make that essentially kind of fast lane, the pipeline set. And just and work, film school. Yep, exactly. If, eventually it will develop into basically a film school. But your work and the, the challenges were so good. I highly recommend you take a look at it. You can do it at your own pace. We're going to give you a lot of time to do it. It's never going to be that hard. of. Um, but with that being said, I would recommend it because I do remember reading your, your writing challenge. Damn, that's... One, the Don't Look at the Moon about the... Um... That's it, that yeah. So the very first challenge was... I, honestly, this was one of my favorite ones that I came up with because like everyone was hitting it to a good degree. The challenge was... The government and everyone tells you do not look at the moon when it comes out. Tell oh, the story really? why. So it's basically like, don't look oh, at the moon. Like, if you look at the moon, do not look at it. And like, the government's like, do not do that. That was the very first challenge. So when when Jessica joined, no challenges, no nothing, just us. I don't even know. We're just running around, running we're just into chilling. each other. We're yeah. vibing in the gen just chat. Vibing in gen chat. Well, all all the wrote, like an intro. Are, are the origin of the of the Rudwig Forest or the origin of the witch? Her origin story. I started writing that actually. For that challenge? No, just in general. As I was like, okay. I was thinking to myself, what you know, what is the origin of the witch? Why is the witch in the Rudwig yeah. Forest? And so I created an origin story, and I started just writing. Oh this. wow! Oh, have I sent that to you, Cal? I don't remember that one. No, I don't remember that one. But do do every this is for everyone out there. Do the screenwriting, do the filmmaking ones. Um, because if if again, like I said, we chopped down a tree and we figured out the way to do it, but it, it's an easy way for us to tell who's, you know, very serious about their craft, good to work with and everything. And again, just because it's a perfect example of it, because that knows that we can eat you and you're not gonna complain when you're covered in blood. And again, it's not that I'm like, oh, these people are whining or whatnot. It is <laughs> mentally, physically draining. Like it is, it's not like, oh my god, this person that we've kept up for like 14 hours is like, you know, mentally drained. It's not like that. It's a very hard no. thing. To do. So I think that's why, again, um, doing those workshops, doing those challenges, stuff like that. We just want to reward people who are passionate about it. That was one thing that came through in the audition process and everything. Was it's like this person has the drive, has the desire. If you have those things, you're, you're going to be amazing to work with. And like I said, I know, you know, right now, the biggest thing is we just need to make um, But everyone who's already acted here, bring you back on set again. We just know it's going to be a much So it's kind of a balance of, you know, we want to bring people on to give them the chance. We want to work with other people or that we've worked with before. Um, and again, I think just because you're a perfect example of it, cause it, it, it was a very easy process. And with how watch a filmmaking would be a nightmare in the sense that we left the camera on the side of the road and we wouldn't even have like that could have that's happened crystals yeah so that's why <laughs> having people who are very passionate on our team is so much easier and that's why i want to give those workshops a shout out thank you for mentioning them um but yeah if you do have time for it hop into it it's always going to be free for super fans and it's just going to be our way to basically you know yoke the creativity i, I love it well, the reason why I bring it up, Jessica, and I know I get it. I mean, it's a, I just want to say how impressed I am with you that you have all these passions and these outlets that you're very extremely creative. And I, that's why I want everyone to know about those things that you're working on, because I look forward to seeing it in print, to actually getting that book, those short story book, you know, Petty Soup for a Petty Soul, which which is so fantastic. But that's what I'm saying. Because that's what I love, and that's how I got. That's how I and a lot of people got involved in the community that you helped wrangle in at that beginning, all the way back in July. Really kept it going, be, and gave that opportunity to myself. Again, I wanted to thank you for that. Of course, Howard, my good friend Howard Aries, I thank him all the time, and everyone else should be thanking him. But to you especially, because you were in the Discord as 
the process was being created as Kellen and Brendan were going out on a limb and going, okay, these are like, like Kellen said, these are people from the internet. I don't know if this is going to work out so good. And it did. And look, look what they've done since. It's amazing. All the amazing actors that have come from backstage who love their work. And of course, who have become a real big part of this family who stuck around and didn't, come here just to audition, but stayed and made, like you, made friendships and people that you're still very close to. Like the people that you that you were on set with, you'll be friends with them forever. They're your, they're your family. They're very important people in your life yeah. because they were there. Yeah, for they were there through those experiences, those battles that you went through from the beginning of the Discord to being on set to Dylan sadly failing to eat you. Hi, Dylan. <laughs> if he watches this later. Sorry, buddy. I'm, and sure, then... I'll, I'm sure I'll hear about that. <laughs> I hope he does. He'll get a kick out of that. I'm sorry, but I'm just teasing. He knows I'm teasing. So, but the, that's the thing is I, that what it was to what it is is something I always like to circle back around on. And, and to let everyone know in the audience, but everyone that watches this later on, to keep an eye on your work, to keep an eye on what you're doing, because I look forward to reading that origin story, hopefully maybe turn into a screenplay, the origins of Rudwick Forest and the witch of Rudwick Forest, yeah, right? Too, called that would be, that would be amazing. Cause that, that's what I'm saying. So that's why I mentioned the workshops because I, I never thought I would have any interest to write a screenplay. I came back from Bigfoot and I wrote a I wrote a screenplay for a sequel for it, a horror comedy for it, because I was so inspired, those writing challenges. And it's so cool that you did the very first one, which was a great concept. And if if that's something that's still on here living on the Discord, I would love to go back. Everyone go back if it's still there. It should be. Cool. I mean, I don't know yeah, if well, I submit it. It should be in there. Those well, if it, if it's not, I'm sure it is. But if it's not, I would love if you if I if I could ask that re request that of you if to repost it, uh, in in fan works or somewhere in one of those channels where we could see it because I would absolutely love to read something from one of the very first that really allowed this community to grow in its infancy to grow to what it is today. So I wanted to thank you again, and also now give you this opportunity to share out what your current, so what you're working on, you're, you're doing these commercials, which I look forward. If you could let people know where they can find you on social media, follow along on this journey of yours in this creative universe that you're creating for us all. Yeah. I mean, I actually, my, my TikTok name is different, but I changed it specifically for Kellen. So DBS would follow me back. It was like what? Kiwi, like my cat, one of my cat's names was Kitty Witty or Kiwi for short. <laughs> Changed my name on TikTok specifically for Kellen. It's uh, CJ Murphy twenty three, and can't change my name on Instagram for whatever reason to CJ Murphy twenty three. It's J Murphy Fit twenty three. They won't for whatever reason let me change it. Um, so those are why did you like change it for Kellen? I tried to. He was only complaining it, it, about Discord. You, I call you by your Discord name. That is your name uh, that you are in. It's I. Here's the thing. I will call if any whatever people want to be called. I will call you that. I have no sense, but because of how much focus I have on Discord, I just completely blank. And I remember multiple times the big thing. Yeah, I was like the saying something else. You're like, oh, it's this, and I'm like, why is it? And it's like, fine. Like I have made. I will say you were definitely one of the first, Jessica. But I've made multiple people be like, fine. Here you go. Like here's my my name now. So. Whatever you want person, me to call I you, I highly recommend it be Discord name because that is like giving my brain so many slots. I, I, if that was just specifically just for Kellen, then I changed the yeah. TikTok name and I post all my stuff on there, my things, my things <laughs> on the TikTok yeah. um, just because I want to. I post what I want on there. But uh, well, not not um not all of my projects are out. I haven't really done much with the writing. I do have a a MacBook now that I recently purchased, so yeah. I'm hoping to do more with it. But the Petty Suit for Your Petty Soul, like I have like the some of the titles, um, 
haven't really gotten with the short stories for that. My The main book and like my baby, like the original writing project that I did, my very first writing that I'm still working on is called um, A Day in the Life. So what it's about is about what goes on in the mind of someone who's mentally ill. So I've interviewed different people. I've used my own thoughts. I've talked to therapists. And at the end of the book, it's going to be resources for people who need help, who want to reach out or who need that support and where to find it because it's it's the things that people don't say so health wise it's not what they say it's what they don't say it's not what they do it's what they don't do so it's very important and i'm very passionate about that because the health is a big thing for me and it's not talked about enough especially like for men specifically working in the job that i work with and the parents and the families that i work with um i really want to have that resource for people that's what's most important to me is helping people that's my life purpose is help people so that's my passion project is a day in life and whenever that's released i will let everybody know well please do and i and that's 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 kind of become a tradition now on the show it i was I made it a thing, trying to make it a thing when Stephanie Curvis was on because she, she works, you know, uh, uh, for animals, uh, for rescue and for, you know, advocacy. And that's important. And I'm glad that you took that opportunity to share that with us, your work that, you know, because that's been brought up a few times by a few that have come on the spotlight that when we're on set, like Jim said on his inter- when he was on the spotlight, your body doesn't know that you're act. Your mind knows, but your body doesn't know that you're acting. You really go through those physical, those straining physical, you know, experiences. But when he comes, when you come home, it's depressing. And yeah, it's it's a sad reality that a lot of us don't speak of what's really going on, you know, with our emotions, with our lives. That it's it's still look down upon for showing any weakness. So I want to also then, you know, also say thank you for the work that you do in your life, you know, that, that, and, and that project that you're working on, I look forward to seeing that and reading that when it comes out. And, and again, it's, it's so amazing to have you on here to the opportunity that Kellen and Brendan have given me DBS has given me to do the spotlight, to get to meet people that are in movies that I love. There's things about every movie that aren't perfect, but there's things about every one of them that I love. And that's the thing about when you said earlier that you messaged them and said, I did it. I watched all of them. And I'm curious now that you're in one of them, do you have a favorite one that is not your own or is horror in the forest ultimately always going to be your favorite TBS movie? (laughs) I into the forest. Into the forest. I'm I'm part of that group of people that love that one. It's a cult classic. Yeah. Well, that sure. it that. I mean, yes, it's still growing and it's still it's still not DBS 1.0, which will be very soon, and the growth will be exponential. I know this to be true. The days that they'll have their studio and Kellen and Brendan are on their yacht, bigger than um, what's it? Uh, what's the studio, Kellen? You guys are always. <laughs> <laughs> like the warlock that, that was on the Ozarks that caught on fire. <laughs> oh no! Well, if we have a little bit of time for that, because that, that sounds like a really actually fascinating story. If we have a little bit of time, just, and then life is just like that. It's it just, it just. I yeah. even posted a TikTok about that. I'm like, it's just, it's just unbelievable the crap that just happens to me. Oh my god! Like it's just, yeah. it's just. It, well, my boss is like, you know, I wouldn't believe you for some of half the things you say unless he's there to witness the things that uh-huh. happen. Like the wild turkeys oh, that cross the road. I think I sent Kellen uh, the turkeys, the wild turkeys that wouldn't gobble at me. <laughs> well, there have been a few encounters of wildlife on set. Were there for Horror in the Forest as we wrap up here? Dog. Uh, dog. James the blind the, the, dog. The, well, the, the blind, blind dog, dog. yeah, James. <laughs> My dog here. Another, yeah. Uh, another, another iconic DBS legend is James the blind dog. And of course, you, as the intro mom from Horror in the Forest, which is right now out on Amazon Prime, everybody. I'm sure everyone who is here has already rented it and reviewed it. But for those that are watching this on the internet later in the future, (laughs) make sure to watch it because it is. It's a fantastic movie. 
and in the in a positive way, I hope Brendan, you hear this, tell and let your brother know. When I compare it to Blair Witch, it's in a positive way because it does remind me. It re for me as a big horror fan, it recaptured that feeling of watching that for the first time. It reminded me of those really cool aspects from that movie. It made me feel unsettling when Alexa walks up to that mirror and the witch is behind her. Spoiler alert! And the scene with Jim. But the breakdowns that you guys are doing, scene by scene breakdowns, guys, make sure to watch if you haven't, because they're fantastic to really get an insight like the spotlight. You get an insight. We get an insight on what it was like on set, what it was like experience, that experience to get in a DBS film and the friends that you make that last the rest of your life. So to finish this out tonight, Jessica, are there any parting words you have, any words of wisdom you have? for the new members of the discord on that process and what, what they, what, you know, any advice you have for them in their acting careers. Well, just be yourself and don't be afraid to make suggestions. Don't be afraid to say how you feel. Don't be afraid to be like, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't do that. That's not realistic. That's not what, what this character would do. Um, what I did is I just envisioned myself as the character. Envision yourself as a character. Be the character. Become the character. I know it's an extreme example, but like Heath Ledger and the Joker. Became the character. Unfortunately, we know how that ended, but being the character is so important. And that's how you get the best acting that you can do. Becoming the character that you're casting. Well, absolutely fantastic advice, Jessica. And again, thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you for having me. It's been a while since I've been up on one of these talk things. I remember in the beginning, I would always go up and be like, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I would just oh, tell for my the, origin story every yeah. time. For the, oh, for oh, the old, the introduce yourself event. Yes. Oh, well, very cool. Well, speaking of events, folks, make sure to stay tuned for the one year, one year anniversary, anniversary of the karaoke, karaoke show, the OG, OG karaoke show. show, as it was coined, another oh, amazing coin by Kellen, but our, our friends show Shotun Jun and Tina Lee, Lee who are hosting the one-year one anniversary year karaoke event right, right after, after the, the spotlight, spotlight, folks. Make, Make sure, sure to, to stay, stay tuned, tuned in, in and uh, support your favorite singers mm -hmm. for the big one-year one anniversary, anniversary of the OG, OG karaoke, karaoke show. And as and usual, as tradition, I pass it off to Kellen to sign us off for the night. Well, this was a fantastic fantastic uh, show i don't know if anyone's been able to drag me out of the shadows as many times that was a fun experience it's a record but, jessica because you did the most rat, Kellen. <laughs> i did i'm like all right all right here we go um but uh uh again i really do want to point back to this could be one the audition process literally be on set that day like she was the first like person like we there worked two with days early yeah we we worked more with you than we had with the main actors in the sense of like getting filmed so that was absolutely amazing in that sense. Being part of the uh, original mod team, like all of these different things that you've done, Jessica deserves a ton of our support, a ton of those things. So everything that you do, please keep us updated, please support it as well too. And thank you as always, Billy, for being absolutely amazing. Really becoming like the history of the sense of all of the amazing people that have been part of this process. I really do appreciate it. And as I was mentioning, we do have our one year anniversary of the karaoke. That is double points. The best of the best karaoke singers that have gotten invite only to this. Um, if you joined our karaoke night, you know it's a good one. It will be posted on YouTube as well. But as always, thank you so much, Billy. Thank you so much, Jessica, for not only proving our model correct, but also being one hell of an intro model, crushing it in horror in the forest. Be sure to check it out. But until then, have a good one, my friends. Thank you for having me. Who knows? Maybe you'll see me again on another set. That's up to Kellen. I'm pretty confident. We'll see. All right. Have a good one, everyone.